Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. Well, this week, the main attraction is the very deep partial lunar eclipse that's occurring tomorrow night, Thursday, November 18th, and technically taking place in the very early morning hours of Friday, November 19th. So what's happening there? What can you expect to see, and how can you be sure to make the most of the longest partial lunar eclipse this century? Well, let's begin looking tomorrow night, Thursday, November 18th, at sunset. The beautiful planet Venus will be blazing in the southwestern sky, along with Saturn and Jupiter a little bit closer to the south. Turning our gaze to the east, we see the full moon rising. November's full moon is called the Beaver Moon, and to its left is the beautiful Pleiades star cluster. Throughout the night, these two will be hanging out together, and as the lunar eclipse gets underway, it will be significantly easier to spot the Pleiades without the glare of the full moon. Lunar eclipses are nice because they're visible from such a wide portion of the globe. Almost all of North America will be able to see the entire eclipse, and much of South America and Asia will be able to see at least part of it. That is dependent on the weather, of course, and mid-November here in the Midwest isn't exactly known for calm, clear nights but we can always hope. Astronomical events also don't follow a prime time or on-demand schedule, and that can lead to some very late nights or very early mornings. Such is the case with this eclipse, unless you're viewing from Australia or Eastern Asia, where the partially eclipsed moon will rise at sunset. Here in Chicago, the show doesn't really get underway until 1.18 a.m. For other time zones, just adjust accordingly. 118 Central Standard Time is when the moon starts to enter the darkest part of Earth's shadow, the Umbra. It will be in a partial phase like this for the next three and a half hours, with the deepest eclipse occurring at about 3.03 a.m. But this eclipse is interesting because the moon just barely misses getting totally eclipsed. 97% of the moon will be covered by the Umbra, with just the barest sliver poking out. The colors that will be visible depend a lot on atmospheric factors, including volcanic dust. But there will be some coloration on the deepest eclipsed parts of the moon, maybe yellow, maybe coppery red or brown. That's the light of all the sunrises and sunsets taking place on Earth at that time, shining onto the moon. So the coloration can vary even during the same eclipse. That's part of the fun. You don't quite know what you're going to get with a very deep partial lunar eclipse. Another nice thing about lunar eclipses, if you have a window with a clear view in the right direction, you don't even have to go outside for this. You can just roll out of bed, take a look, and once you're done looking, go back to sleep. If you do want to photograph it or even look through a telescope, then being outside is probably best. But where in the sky is it going to be? Well, my recommendation during reasonable hours is to scope out your view to the southwest and west. In Chicago, the moon will enter the Earth's shadow about two-thirds of the way up in the southwest. The greatest eclipse will occur about halfway up in the west-southwest. And the moon will be fully out of the umbra when the moon is essentially directly west and about 20 degrees up in the sky. That's at 4.47 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now let me be clear, you don't need any optical aid to see a lunar eclipse. Sure, the view through binoculars or a telescope can certainly be interesting, and it might increase the amount of color that you're able to see. But you can also just look up and enjoy. These eclipses happen over the course of hours, not like a total solar eclipse, which is over in a minute. So if it's cloudy when you take a look, you can snooze for a bit, and then come back later and see if the skies have improved. So why is this the longest partial lunar eclipse this century? Well, the short answer is, if it were any longer, it would be a total eclipse. The umbra is a small cone of shadow inside the larger penumbra. How long it takes the moon to travel through depends mostly on how far it is from Earth at that time. The moon's average distance from Earth is 238,000 miles, but it can vary by about 13,000 miles on either side of that. That's how we get some solar eclipses that are total, but sometimes the moon is farther away and we get an annular eclipse, where the moon doesn't fully cover the sun. The farther the moon is from Earth, the slower it moves in its orbit, and the longer it takes to go through Earth's shadow during a lunar eclipse. It will be pretty far away during this eclipse, so that increases how long the eclipse lasts. And it's basically going as close to the center line of the shadow as possible without getting fully covered. 
If it got any closer to the center line through Earth's shadow, we would get a total lunar eclipse. One thing to look for in this eclipse, or really any time, is the movement of the moon relative to the background stars, and during a lunar eclipse, its movement through Earth's shadow. If you see the moon at sunset, take note of how far it is from the Pleiades, maybe measuring it with your outstretched hand or with an object that fills the space between. Later, during the eclipse, take note of how that has changed. A rough estimate is that the moon moves roughly its diameter to the east every hour. So if you see the moon at 6 p.m. as it rises in the east, then again at 3 a.m. at greatest eclipse, it will have moved roughly nine moon widths, almost five degrees in the sky, and will be noticeably closer to the Pleiades than when the night began. And by the next night, you'll see the difference very clearly. On Friday night, the moon will rise essentially in between the Pleiades and the fiery red eye of Taurus the Bull, the star Aldebaran. So as far as partial eclipses go, this one is definitely quite long, has some very interesting things to look for, so I hope the skies are clear where you are and you can stay up or wake up for a little bit and see this interesting part of the solar system at work. Well, that's what we have for you today. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing. We'll see you next time.